I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Perfection, whether it's in photography or life in general, just simply does not exist. However, that doesn't stop us from striving for it. Not just every other time that we go out with our camera, but for every single photograph that we make. We have this innate feeling within ourselves that says, this image that you're making now, it has to be perfect. Anything less than that is just not good enough. But if perfection doesn't exist, what exactly are we striving for? And why are we striving for it in the first place? In this latest episode of The Basics of Photography, we're going to be looking at some pitfalls of striving for perfection and help you as budding photographers get round them and ultimately make you a lot more confident about the photographs that you make. So you might now be thinking, hang on a minute Mr Flat Cat Photographer Sir, the other day I saw a photograph that met my eye and I couldn't see anything wrong with it. It was, in my eyes, absolutely perfect. And that might be true to you, to your eyes, but the reason that perfection doesn't exist is that perfection means something different to absolutely everybody. You may approach a scene where there's a clear blue sky above this wonderful landscape, make a photograph and think, that's the best photograph I've ever taken. That is perfect. And then another photographer might come along and just say to you on the side, it'd be better if there were a few clouds in the sky, wouldn't it? And then that dashes your hopes because you think, actually, what I thought was perfect might not be perfect for that person or indeed anybody else looking at my photographs. So our first pitfall of perfection is disappointment. The more we strive for something that is unachievable, the more disappointed we get. It's a bit like dedicating your life's work to proving fairies exist or proving that the moon's made out of cheese. You can put all of the effort that you have into proving those things, but at the end of the day, we all know that you're not going to be able to prove them. As this simple and, let's face it, less than scientific graph shows, the more effort you put in to achieving perfection in your photographs, the more disappointed you become. As we've just clarified, perfection in photography and life in general doesn't exist. And because of that, every time we try and achieve it, the more photographs we're going to come back with that we're disappointed with, that don't hit our high standards. Now, I'm not saying here that we shouldn't have high standards when it comes to making photographs. I'm not saying that you should go away from this video and say, well, the flat cat photographer told me that there isn't such thing as perfection in photography, therefore I can get away with mediocre photographs. What people usually do is get mixed up between perfection and aesthetic value. Perfection is that thing that we all have our own opinions on, so we're never going to agree on what it is. Whereas aesthetic values are a set of values that go together to make us look at a photograph and think, actually, I really quite like that, or, hmm, that one's not for me. They don't have to be perfect to engender those feelings within us. Aesthetic values basically come down to a combination of two things, light and composition. It's our job as photographers to put those photographs together 
and we can use these aesthetic values of light and composition to influence how the people that look at our photographs feel when they see them. Now, they don't have to be perfect to allow our viewers to feel something specific. All they need to do is chime in with these aesthetic values. When you're out in the field with your camera, instead of thinking, what is my idea of perfection and how can I imprint it into this photograph? Maybe think, what aesthetic values can I use here in order to make this a good photograph? If you change your mindset in that way, I guarantee you'll not only feel more positive and confident about the photographs that you make, other people will start looking at your photographs and thinking, hang on a minute, that photographer's onto something there. Our next pitfall of perfection is a lack of honesty in our photographs. If perfection existed, we'd all be living in this utopian world, all living together in harmony and perfection. But we don't. As I record this video, I'm recording it during coronavirus lockdown, which means that I can't really leave my house for anything more than a bit of exercise or to go to the shop. For me, that's not an ideal life, and I'm pretty sure if perfection existed, coronavirus simply wouldn't. But it does. It's here, and we've got to live with it. But when we make photographs and aim for perfection, what we're aiming for is to be able to capture that ideal scene, the ideal photograph. And if that photograph doesn't exist, then we're going to have to implement things within that photograph to try and get across the feeling that it exists, even if it doesn't. Maybe I'm overcomplicating things here, but basically what I'm trying to get at is that in trying to achieve something that we can't achieve, we try and do it by lying to the people looking at our photographs. We might try and enhance the light. We might try and take something out or put something in that adds to that photograph. But in doing so, we're not being true to ourselves as photographers, and we're certainly not being true to the thing that it is that we're photographing. For me, the sign of a good photographer is somebody that can go out at any time of day during any sort of weather conditions with any equipment and still come back with brilliant photographs. Because that shows me that that photographer is placing more emphasis on good aesthetic values than trying to lie to us by enhancing and idealising the scene in front of them. Our next pitfall of perfection follows on nicely because it's all about over post-production of our photographs. I'm sure we've all been there. We've been out and about with our camera and witnessed an amazing scene and photographed it and photographed it and thought this is going to be one of the best photographs that I've ever taken. And then when you look at it on the big screen of your computer you suddenly think actually I haven't done it the justice that I wanted to. But hang on a minute, I could do something with it in post-production to bring some life back into it. The problem with this is that we are relying on that post-production software to achieve something that wasn't achievable whilst we are out in the field. Now here I must stress that I'm not saying that you shouldn't use post-production to enhance your photographs or even not use post-production at all because it's an extremely useful tool for us as photographers. But what I am saying is don't use post-production so much that it starts to take us back to being dishonest through our photographs. Make sure that when you go into post-production you don't cross any of your red lines. If you want to know what red lines are, then check out this video that I filmed last week all about morality in photography and how far to go with your images. Our final pitfall of perfection is becoming too blinkered with what you photograph and how you photograph it. I've heard loads of photographers in the past before say, I only use these settings on my camera because that's what gives me the perfect result. Or I only go out at a certain time of day because that's when the perfect light happens. 
or I only photograph this sort of subject because to me that is perfection. If you set yourselves those boundaries then you're going to miss out on a huge amount of things. As many of you will know, photography for me is a form of exploration and a way of making new discoveries, whether that's new techniques or new locations to photograph. And I feel that if I limited myself to a couple of hours of the day or when the weather was absolutely spot on or to a specific set of settings or a specific set of subject matter, then I would be limiting myself tremendously in terms of the discoveries that I could make. Now, I'm not saying that when I go out all of my photographs I'm really pleased with. I'm saying that when I go out, at least I'm giving it a go. I'm trying out different things. I'm working with different types of subject matter. And in doing that, I am enriching who I am as a photographer, rather than thinking, mm, it's not quite perfect today, I'm just going to leave my camera on the shelf and not do anything. By doing that, you're never going to progress as a photographer. You're just going to stay in your own little bubble forever. The other day, I set myself a little challenge, and it's a challenge that I'm going to encourage you to do as well, especially if you're not quite sure whether you are striving for perfection or whether you are relying on those more honest aesthetic values. I went out for my lockdown walk, which is all the fashion at the moment, and I decided to take my camera along with me. But I wanted to travel light, so I just took my camera body and a single lens. I also thought, I don't want to do any post-production on these photographs, I just want them to come out of the camera. So instead of shooting in RAW, which I would do most of the time, I set my camera to just record JPEGs to avoid any of that messing around afterwards. I also went out at a time of day where you wouldn't really call it ideal for photography. It wasn't horrendous, but it wouldn't be the sort of conditions where you'd go out to take dramatic, wonderful, all-singing, all-dancing landscape photographs. And I'm not saying that the photographs that I came back with were world beaters. I wouldn't say that I'm going to suddenly start selling them on my website or posting them on social media and saying, look at these amazing photographs that I hardly put any work into creating. But what it did do was make me look and observe the world in much more detail because I didn't have that ideal light to work with. I didn't have the ideal subject matter. I wasn't trying to achieve some kind of utopian ideal world within my photographs. What I was doing is I was relying on my knowledge of aesthetic values within photography and just running with that. I'm not saying that by accepting this challenge you'll have some kind of photographic epiphany but what I am saying is that if you do accept this challenge, you'll realise that the things that we can control in our photography, that we can learn, these aesthetic values, we often neglect with excuses saying that the subject wasn't perfect, the light wasn't perfect, the situation that I was photographing in wasn't perfect, therefore I couldn't get the perfect shot. But we now realise that that perfect shot doesn't exist. So to keep learning about photographic techniques, to keep observing the world around us, and to diversify how we make photographs can only make us better photographers. I'll share some of the photographs that I made in that little challenge with you at the end of this video. But before I do, if you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it, then please give it the customary thumbs up. If you'd like to make any of your own suggestions about perfection in photography or have any other comments, then please share them with me in that comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you've yet to subscribe to the Yorkshire Photo Walks YouTube channel for more content like this, then please do so. And remember to hit that bell icon to be reminded every time we post a new video. 
If you'd like to learn about photography out in the field, practically, then check out YorkshirePhotoWalks.com for our latest schedule of photo walks, where we help you to improve your photography skills on short walks through inspirational Yorkshire locations. You can also follow us on social media at PhotoWalksYorks for all of our latest news and photo walk photographs. If you'd like to check out my own personal portfolio, then it's the flatcappedphotographer.co.uk. Next time you're out and about with your camera, don't necessarily think that your photographs have to be perfect every time. Do a bit more research into photography, experiment at different times of day, and realise that those aesthetic values are much more important than some sort of utopian ideal. If you do that, then I guarantee that you'll not only become more confident in the photographs that you make, more people will appreciate them for what they are. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Mm -hmm.